Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, would like to include for the record a study from the Heritage Foundation titled Inclusion Delusion, the Anti-Semitism of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Staff at Universities dated December 8, 2021 by Dr. J. Green and James Paul. No objection. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Shapiro, is wokeism, or more specifically DEI programs, a gateway to anti-Semitism and even hatred or violence towards people of faith? Absolutely. Um, uh, it seems that Jews are not part of the uh, latest uh, hierarchy of intersectionality, and they're, they're too privileged in, in various ways. And certainly the growth of DEI bureaucracies and programs has uh, been correlated uh, with the growth of anti-Semitism. Can you talk about how, they, um, how, how DEI programs foster hatred toward people of faith? Well, they, they, they foster illiberal attitudes of, of all kinds. And um, again, this is not, you know, as Suzanne said, the words diversity, equity, inclusion, nobody could disagree with their facial meaning. Intellectual diversity, people wanting to be feel welcome, treated fairly, equitably, that's great. But the way that they've been perverted, you, you ask about uh, religious groups, um, there, is, uh, there, there are plenty rife examples of uh, religious groups that, that uh, are not treated the same as, as secular groups of, of various kinds. Um, even though the Supreme Court ruled more than 25 years ago in Ro Rosenberger versus UVA that if you provide certain types of resources, uh, uh, you, you should provide them equally equitably uh, to religious organizations as well. The study that I just mentioned from the Heritage Foundation 2021 found that DEI-related staff on American college campuses were overwhelmingly anti-Israel and a majority were indifferent or even agreeable to the Chinese Communist Party. Based on a search of over 700 Twitter accounts of DEI staff on campuses across the country, just 28 tweets were found to be favorable toward Israel, while 605 tweets were negative. 133 tweets were pro-China, while just 83, 83 of the overall tweets were negative. Um, d doesn't it seem like these DEI staff are in themselves, um, aren't very diverse in their viewpoints? Uh, that's true. I mean, they, they have their individual constitutional rights as well to speak uh, on, on however they like, but those kinds of views definitely uh, are imbued in the trainings that we've seen, the materials uh, of the various kinds of programmings that they uh, promulgate. And, and since you're uh, citing studies, I have another Heritage study. I can't enter it, but I suggest, uh, I recommend that you look at Heritage uh, Backgrounder 3641 by the same authors, Jay Green and James Paul, titled Diversity University, DEI Bloat in the Academy. And that addresses a host of these issues, including, including one of your colleagues uh, mentioned the increasing cost and the, the growth in bureaucracy certainly contributes to that as well. $190 billion a year that the federal government gives to colleges and universities um, what, what can we do to stop universities from hiring uh, the, these DEI or woke programs that directly attack people of faith? Well, I think the federal government spends too much money on almost everything. Uh, and this is certainly an area where uh, cutbacks are, I think, appropriate, but uh, at least attach uh, heavier strings, constitutionally based uh, uh, values based of, of uh, you know, classical liberalism that we're all supposed to uh, agree on uh, in, in the broad polity. Um, seems like a, quite, a, quite a problem that we have, and I'm deeply concerned that our, the leadership, the administrations of our universities are hiring uh, these woke officials, DEI programs that attack people of whatever faith. So I appreciate you bringing light to that. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Can I say one more thing, Mr. Banks? I have 48 seconds left. Yeah, uh, I just want to clarify, and I think you probably would agree with this distinction between the DEI bureaucracies and staffs and the sorts of folks working on civil rights compliance, Title IX, ADA, all of these things that we would have recognized from our time in college and graduate school 20, 25, 30 years ago. This is a fairly recent phenomenon, so it's not about um, you know, shutting down student groups that want to you know, uh, care about their ethnic backgrounds or anything like that. It's about institutional promulgation of uh, illiberal uh, uh, postmodern theories. Thank you, I yield back.